Hello and welcome to Precision Neuromuscular Therapy for the Lower Extremity. Here is a brief review of some of the anatomy that we'll cover during the training. The first thing that you should do is familiarize yourself with the SI joint and you should take a look at the ligaments both anteriorly and posteriorly. The muscles that we'll be covering will begin with the gluteus maximus then the gluteus medius, very important stabilizer for the hip, especially in single leg standing. Here's a wonderful picture of the sacrotuberous ligament, which we will be treating, and this is the obturator internus muscle. This is the trigger point for the obturator internus and a different view of that same muscle. The deep hip rotators, will encompass a whole section that you will be exploring. Here is the two largest of them, the piriformis and the quadratus femoris. In the middle are the gemellus muscles and the two obturators. So the gemelli and the obturators and the piriformis and quadratus femoris comprise the deep six rotators. Here's another picture of the piriformis and its relationship to the sciatic nerve and a picture of the quadratus femoris. Notice how large the quadratus femoris is. Here's a picture of the tensor fascia lata, the TFL, and you can see the gluteus maximus, and here's the gluteus medius. All of this feeds into the ITB. The vastus lateralis is extremely large and comprises the whole lateral aspect of the thigh. There's the trigger point for the tensor fascia lata. Here are the hamstrings. This is the bicep femoris, and then we have the membranosus, semi-membranosus, and semi-tendinosus muscles. So do familiarize yourself with the hamstrings, this is the short head of the bicep. The dotted outline is the gluteus maximus. We'll be spending quite a bit of time on the quadriceps as they insert uh, at the knee and their relationship and their effect on the patella. So do uh, review your anatomy books and take a look at the insertion, the muscular insertions around the knee itself. Here's a list of all of them, the rectus femoris, the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis. This is the retinaculum that surrounds the knee. Um, this is the sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus attachments, the pizanserine attachments. So all of these influences all have a great deal to do with knee pain of various sorts. We'll also be looking at the um, patellotibial ligaments, which are these ligaments. It's a great picture of the adductor anatomy. We'll be looking at the adductor magnus. We'll be looking at the adductor brevis, adductor longus, and the pectineus. Here's a picture of the obturator externus. We saw the internus previously. This is the externus, and through it goes the obturator nerve. The popliteus and the plantaris muscles will be part of the second half of precision neuromuscular therapy for the lower extremity. The popliteus especially is a very important muscle and the anatomy can be a little bit confusing, so make sure you review that. The peroneus or fibularis group, they can be named either, is the peroneus longus, which goes all the way up to the fibular head, and the peroneus brevis, and then there's a smaller tertius, which is more anterior. The two ankle ligaments that we'll be covering are the anterior talofibular ligament and the calcaneofibular ligament, the most common ligaments in 
inversion ankle sprains. Of course, the gastrocnemius, one of the largest and most important muscles in the lower leg, and the soleus, very important muscle for Achilles tendon issues. Do take your anatomy books and take a look at these muscles of the foot, the adductor hallucis, the flexor digitorum brevis, the abductor digiti minimi, and then the flexor digitorum longus and the quadratus plantae, most importantly. The third layer is the adductor hallucis, um, the transverse and the oblique head. Those are the most important muscles of the foot and the ones that we'll be dealing with. The more you review the anatomy, the, the easier it will be to, to do the work itself. One of the things that we found is when people get hung up in the anatomy, it takes too much attention and time to deal with that. And then it makes actually the learning of the technique stuff a little more difficult. So it's not an absolute necessity, but it will make your learning experience so much better if you have time to review the anatomy before you come. Thank you very much and look forward to a great seminar.